This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1970-73 Carryover League, and we got something special for you today. We resume some interleague play, and we have a series, the best of three series, between the Baltimore Orioles and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Boy, the bright lights are on these two franchises in this timeline, we would know. Winners of the 70 and 71 World Series, of course, face themselves in 71, face each other in 71. So, it is a heck of an, a very important interleague series, which I usually diminish the value because I only play th best of threes instead of best of sevens. But I don't want the tilting of the overall standings affected because of interleague. So, but in what is largely exhibition, turns out that it's everything is on the line with these two squads. I want to first pull up a well, baseball reference. We have it right here, folks. There it is. The Pirates and Orioles played in two World Series in the decade. Both went seven games. Pirates got two uh, road game seven wins. And here's the box of game seven of the 71 series in Baltimore. Pittsburgh wins two to one on October 17th, 1971 in front of 47,000 people in Memorial Stadium. Look at the time. Two hours and 10 minutes for a game seven. That's remarkable, really. I know it's low scoring, but <laughs> well, you'll see how the magic continues. Uh, Pittsburgh wins this game two to one. Blass goes the distance against Mike Cuellar, uh, who had a little bit of relief help in the ninth inning from Dobson and McNally. Uh, that's uh, 60 victories right here, by the way. All 20 game winners uh, in this game uh, didn't help them. Uh, Blass beats Cuellar. Blast is line nine innings, four hits, and a run. Um, McQuay are eight innings, two runs, with just the four hits. So what happens in game one? <laughs> you think I'm making this up, but I'm not. So game one, in Baltimore, it is Steve Blass in a game one against Mike Quayar in a game one. Blast goes nine innings, gets a no decision, five hits, and a solo homer by Kurt Bleffrey, acquired by the Orioles, reacquired by the Orioles in the offseason. Mike Cuellar goes nine innings, no decision, six hits and a one run. RBI double by Roberto Clemente in the sixth inning. This is just pure magic, folks. I don't know how you can predict something like this to happen. You hope it does. I kind of wish this was broadcast on YouTube. This would have been an extraordinarily uh, just uh, draining game to play and call and strategize. It was really a draining game. In the 10th inning, both teams threw out their highly touted lefty closers. And they did not disappoint. Ramon Hernandez, three shutout innings with three singles and four Ks. Grant Jackson a little better, just one hit and a K. Then we had Bill Wilson, two shutout innings for Baltimore. And then we had Dave Justy, three shutout innings for the Pirates. Dick Hall comes in for two innings and he makes the blunder in the chess game. You know, we're like the end of... There is no strategy, by the way, folks. Folks, when a game goes 15, 16 innings, there's no strategy of what to do, what to do. It's, a, it's over by that point. All strategizing is done. There's no magical elixir to fix, you know, something. So Al Oliver, believe it or not, started the game on the bench, came in in the seventh inning, went 0 for 2 against lefties, Cuellar and um, Grant Jackson. But then he hits a solo home run off of Dick Hall, and Pittsburgh's uh, bullpen is taxed. J 
Justy and Hernandez can't go anymore, so Marcel Latchman, the long man, is asked to get the final three outs in the bottom of the 16th inning. And he retires Bobby Gritz on a fly ball, Kurt Mott on a fly ball, and yes, of course, Boo Pal on three fly balls. Let's assume some of those went to the warning track just for drama. Final score, it is Pittsburgh winning 2-1, to one, just like that Game 7 matchup between Blass and Cuellar. How about a big congratulations to Stratomatic <laughs> for making this a wonderful game where you can do a replay and you get something as great or as better as a game, you know, from 40, 51 years ago, 1971, my goodness. So there it is, folks. One of the better Stratomatic games I've ever played. Uh, in a simple best of three series, which doesn't normally have ramifications overall in the standings. Uh, Ramon Hernandez and Dave Justy are unavailable for Game 2. Grant Jackson and Bill Wilson unavailable for Game 2. So they're going to need the starting pitching to shine, and it probably will, in a Game 2. Now in Pittsburgh... The Orioles will send Dave McNally on the mound, one of their 20-game winners, against Jim Rooker, who I don't even think was in Pittsburgh yet. This is a 73 card of Jim Rooker, 10-6, 286 for the 73 Pirates, asking to try and get the two-game sweep. Before we start this game, one more, because it's so important, one more quick peek at the overall standings. I know it's way too early to project. But it is the Red Sox who have leapfrogged the Orioles for first place in the East as uh, by a game and a half. Not a big deal early on. But really, the Pirates kind of need this just a little bit more because the Reds are, you know, the Reds are on fire. Uh, the Reds dusted the Cardinals earlier uh, in a series. So you see now the Reds are in first, the Cardinals three back. Pirates is 10 and 8 because they've had a brutal schedule, brutally difficult schedule, which continues today. But they're still just two games back. A win here puts them within a game and a half. I guess you could say the Pirates needed a little more than the Orioles. So probably going to be a three-game series. But let's get started from Pittsburgh. Leading off for the Orioles is Bobby Gritch. 59. Sky's the center. Don Buford, 43. Pitcher X. Rooker is an E17. And he boots that ball. Rich uh, Buford's a B-stealer. Singin's got a nice arm minus two. He'll hold there for Boog Pal, having a struggling year. 2-4 center. Boog's not doing so well with his MVP card of 70. And with two outs, let's take a look at Kurt Motten. Batting fourth today against left-handed pitching is a designated hitter. In an error, of course, where they didn't have a designated hitter. Martin was used as a pinch hitter in 71, but he had four homers and 53 at-bats and all of those against lefties. And to, now would be a pretty good time to get another one of those. The pitch to Martin, 2-7, is single one to seven, liner to short, and he lines out. All right, Roberto Clemente leads off for the Pirates. Pirates, if you're wondering why, yeah, they struggled. Let's look at Clemente's card, by the way. They struggled coming out of the gates and then when they put Clemente in the leadoff spot, they started to get hot, and they're just going to leave him there until it's time to shuffle things up again after a dry spell. But right now, with the Pirates winning, Clemente will stay up at the top of the order. 48 is a walk. Richie Hebner, 32, is a 6-4-3 double play. So much for the... Unfortunately, Clemente does not steal, so that hurts their uh, top of the lineup. Uh, opportunities. Sanguian won four. Skies allowed. Top of two. Paul Blair, 34. Short. Brooks Robinson, 69 is a single. Andy Echebaron, 110, base hit in the center field. Brooksy holds at second against um, Zisk. This is in the center with a zero arm. Brooksy's not much of a base runner. 1 to 10. Two on for hats off to Roy Foster. 67 is a walk off of Rooker's card. Clearly a step down from Steve Blass in game one. The Orioles have the bases loaded for the first time in 18 innings against the Pirates. And it's Davey Johnson. Pirates going to play it back looking for a double play ball. 59 is a sack fly to center. 
And when it took 16 innings to get one run in Game 1, it only takes the Orioles two innings in Game 2. Bobby Gritch, 5-12, skies are right. Early lead for Baltimore as we go to the second. Willie Stargell, 46, second X off of uh, McNally. Excellent defense for Baltimore. Davey Johnson's a 2 8 makes the play. Richie Zisk, 1-2, center B plus injury. Now this is a problem, big problem now. They're short in center field. They traded Matty L. Lou in the offseason because of the, uh, the space they need for all their outfield first base types. So even though Zisk wasn't very good defensively in center, at least he was a 44. And beyond that, everybody else was much worse. It looks like Al Oliver will come on. Or you could move Clemente in the center with a minus five arm. I think they're going to move Clemente in the center. Put Al Oliver in left field. And put Willie Stargell in his great throwing arm in right field. So they'll have threes across the board in the outfield now with outstanding throwing arms. Bob Robertson. 2-6 is a K. All right, top of the third. It's Buford. 37 is a walk. Boog Powell, 211. Is it one? Six, three, double play for the struggling Boog Powell. Kurt Mutton, 311 is a K. Bottom of the third. It's Bill Mazeroski. 1 5. Ground ball to short. He scored the first run uh, of the last game, but then got injured late in it. And uh, his replacement, Stennett, gave up a key error in that game. Jerry May, 46. 1 of 10 off McNally. Lines out. Gene Alley, 510, catcher's card, at your Baron, 313, catcher. The inning's over. And both Oriole starters, Quayar and McNally, have faced the minimum batters through three innings in each start. Paul Blair, 46, is a K. Brooks Robinson, 57, is a K. And at your Baron, 36, is a K. Jim Rooker settles down on the fourth. It's just one zip. Clemente. 58 off McNally. Skies are left. Richie Hebner, 33, third A. What are you betting on the final score, folks? Two to one, three to two. Don't know which team will win by that score, but wouldn't be a bad guess. Manny Sangian, 55, off the McNally card. Homer, one to seven, double the rest, and he gets a three. That's a home run. Roar. Manny Sangian has power against lefties. Not against righties, which is why he bats third against the lefties. And it's Pop Stargell. 1-6 is a K. We'll go to the fifth of a 1-1 tie. Roy Foster. 37. Double 1-8 to eight is a double. Dave Johnson. 47 is a K. Bobby Gritch with our second and one out. 52. Skies are right. And with two outs, it's Buford. 46 is a K off of Rooker. A lot of strikeouts today for him. Bottom of the fifth. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Bottom of the fifth. It'll be Al Oliver. Brought in, didn't start last game, was a hero. Didn't start this game, being brought in off the bench. 1 8 to the ground of the third. Bob Robertson. 2 3, grounds a short. And Mazeroski, 54. 54! Bill Mazeroski off McNally. It's a homer if you have power. And yeah, Bill Mazeroski does have power. Let's take a look at the Mazeroski card anyway. They gave him power here with a 71 card, a single home run, and 193 at bats. And it comes at a no better time than now. And the Pirates take a 2-1 lead. That sounds familiar. Jerry May, 39's a walk. Gene Tornado Alley, 47, second X. Davey Johnson's a 2-8 at second. Oh, but he gives up a, blue, a single. Tough break for Davey there. That could be huge. Two on, two outs, Roberto Clemente. 1-11 misses the column, grounds the short. We'll go to the six with the Pirates, leading 2-1. Here's Boog Pal. 36. Oh, a walk. He finally reaches on something. Not a hit, but he gets home with a walk. 
Kurt Motten saw the card earlier, 5-5, rolls to second C, Powell at second base for Paul Blair. 2-7, let's take a look at Paul Blair's card of 70. Just a little tiny step down from his 69 card, which is arguably his best year. Rangy can throw, a stealer, better against lefties. 2-7 is a single to right. It's funny, we started the game with a minus five arm in right field, now we got a minus four arm as the minus five moved to center. But Boot Pal's not going to advance past uh, third base. Runners are on the corners for Brooks Robinson. 610 off of Brooker, catcher's card. We need a foul out here for Mr. St. Guillen. It's a 3E6. 3E6. Cannot get it, and it's a pass ball. So, that's an odd way to tie a game on a pass ball. Unearned run, it's 2-2. Two two. And it'll be Echeverry, a runner at second and two outs. 49. This is going to be a hit off the Rooker card. Triple one, double. That'll be a double. And that will score Blair from second, who advanced on the pass ball. So, a rare Manny Singian pass ball hurts the Pirates as the Orioles take a 3-2 lead. Roy Foster. 66. Bouncer to second. Mazeroski's at 2-E10 at second base. Makes the play. Bottom of the sixth. McNally and Rooker are starter sevens. Here's Richie Hebner. 1-3. Rounds a short. Sanguian, home earlier. 1-12. Flies a left. And Stargell. 5-10. Catcher's card. Edger Barron's a 3-E13. Kind of high E rating there. He makes the play. One of those two hour and 10 minute games, folks. We are already into the seventh inning. It's Davey Johnson. 4-9. Triple one double off of Rooker is a double. Now the problem, I mean Rooker is, he's a good pitcher, not a great one. But again, you don't have a bullpen because game one went 16 innings. So all you have is Latchman and Dick Kelly and uh, Rooker is better than those guys. So you got to break Rooker to get him out of there. In a 3-2 game, Bobby Gritch is thinking about bunting on the road with a lead, which I'm not a fan of, nor is Earl Weaver. So he will not bunt. I'll take the Earl Weaver, the disdain of bunting into uh, factor, factoring what to do here. Bobby Gritch will swing away. 57 is a K. And a bunt would have been, yep, base hit, folks, on a three for a B bunter. So there you go. I followed the logic of Earl Weaver and it backfired. Don Buford, 3-5 is a walk. You got first and second one out, one more base runner. All we need is a walk to break Rooker and get some trouble in this game. Boog Pal, 2-12 for Boog Pal is a 6-4-3 double play. And the Orioles cannot get any insurance in the top of the seventh inning. Stretch time here in Pittsburgh. We are enjoying the intruders. Uh, gamble record label band from Pennsylvania in the 60s vocal group here Cowboys to Girls LP of 1968 love is like a baseball game three strikes you're out all right bottom of the seventh it'll be Al Oliver 39 off of McNally's a flat right Bob Robertson 47 is a bouncer to second. Davey Johnson. Dave Johnson's a 2 8 at second base. Almost made an error. It's a ground ball. And here's Bill Mazeroski. He had a homer in the fifth. 54 again! It's 54 for the second time off McNally. What is going on in Pittsburgh with Bill Mazeroski? Two home runs in the last two at bats. He had one in 208 plate appearances in 1971. And the Pirates seem to have the Orioles number again. They've tied it at three in the seventh. Folks, buckle up. I have no idea how long this can go. I packed up some rations and some potable water and a sleeping bag in case this is an all night game. So, Jerry May, two, three, hit by pitch. McNally, one batter away from breaking with two outs. Gene Alley, 53, rolls to the pitcher. Wow, Rooker and McNally both can break in the eighth inning with two base runners. 
both had their bullpens a little bit taxed. They're asking them to continue into the eighth inning of a 3-3 tie. And uh, Baltimore has put three more men on than the Pirates in this game. Otherwise, it's dead even. It'll be Kurt Mutton in the eighth. 59, Sky's the center. Paul Blair, 211. Grounds are short. And Brooks Robinson, 47 is a K. Jim Rooker gets a reset there. So you need three base runners and ninth to break him. McNally has to continue here. It's the dangerous Roberto Clemente. You saw the card earlier. Here's the pitch to Roberto. 43, right X, the weak spot of the Oriole defense. This is Roy Foster, who's a 4E10. Baltimore had Frank Robinson. They traded him to the Indians in the offseason so they could bring up 337 hitting Al Bumbrey. They also got Roy Foster in the deal and a bunch of draft tokens, which were used to acquire Grant Jackson. So Baltimore improved in a lot of areas, but they had to sacrifice a nice right fielder in Frank Robinson. Roy Foster is a 4E10 in right field. And that is going to be a double. They do not even have a defensive replacement for him. Hebner. If you're thinking about bunting, forget about it. He's a D bunner and he crushes lefties. The next three guys are left handed. Pat McNally's left handed, so he's he's gonna you have to break him to get him out of there. Hebner. 310 is a single dot, and that's what happened. You broke him, and it's time to get him out of there. A righty, a lefty, and a lefty. Well, I guess you gotta go Dick Hall. Because Grant Jackson's not available. So, seven innings and a couple batters for McNally. And Dick Hall, we brought in with runners on the corners to face Sanguine in the, in the infield up. Dick Hall was your closer two years ago in the World Series victory versus Cincinnati. He's still good in 70. Here's his card. Not, not quite as good as 69, though. 10 and 5 with a 310 ERA. But Grant Jackson's much better and is the closer. Now Hall's the setup guy. We'll have to try and figure this one out, though. Runners are on the corners. The infield up. Manny Sanguian, who homer earlier. The pitch to Manny. 3-6 off the Sanguian card. Homer, 1-10, to 10, fly ball the rest, and it is gone on a 3. The Pittsburgh offense today is Manny Sanguian and Bill Mazeroski. That's peculiar, but it is a three-run homer, and that will probably do it for this series. It is now a 6-3 to three game. Willie Stargell, 67, 1-11 is the lineout. Al Oliver, 56, sky is the center. And Bob Robertson, 38, is a single. Mazeroski. 34 is another single. Two on, two outs for Jerry May. Batting for Jerry May will be Marv Staley, a left-handed bat, and he could be the DH. Uh, pitch to Marv. 37 is a ground into the third. But it is 6-3 in the ninth. Rooker might go for this complete game. He got a reprieve in the eighth, so you need three base runners to break him. And it'll be Echebaron leading off in the ninth. 67, ball four. The big beneficiary in this series may be the Boston Red Sox. As they have uh, a nice little couple game lead on the Orioles as we approach the All-Star break. Roy Foster, 58, sky's the center. Dave Johnson, 2-5 is a 6-4-3 double play. And the Pirates win in a two-game sweep, 6-3. to three. Jim Rooker goes the distance. Really, a bunch of singles was his only struggle. And that two-out double by Echebaron off his card. Let's take a look at the composite box and the two squads' year-to-date numbers. Oh, Jim Rooker, complete game as the number three starter for Pittsburgh. Six hits, three runs. Two were earned after a pass ball in the one inning. Five walks and eight strikeouts. A complete game. Dick Hall could not figure out the eighth inning. Ended up giving up three hits and a run. Tough loss for Dave McNally. Probably would have been hooked had the bullpen had more players available. Gave up six hits. We'll be charged with five runs. 
and all of those are earned via the long ball. Three walks, two strikeouts. One double nine oh one oh eight six nine three six five eight three two. Just two quick games here for the Pirates. Inching up on the Cincinnati Reds in their division. If you're wondering, the other interleague matchup is the Boston Red Sox and the Cincinnati Reds. So yeah, these are like World Series previews historically and possibly this year. So, Oakland and Pittsburgh were my preseason World Series picks. I'm not going to venture far off. They're both playing still good baseball. But there's a bunch of great teams. About eight teams, I would say, have a really strong chance of getting the World Series this year. So the Pirates are 11 and 8, hitting 293, 395 ERA. Um, both of the back end pitchers, Justin Hernandez, already pitched 14 and a third innings. It's a lot of work. They've needed it. They've needed the, their best relievers in baseball to. Uh, Pitch a lot of innings just to get an 11-8 record because the schedule's been brutal for them. I think the Pirates still have to play the Cubs and Cards, so it might get easier. Already play the Reds, so that's a good that's good news. 11 and 8, and Baltimore is also 11 and 8. Uh, you see that Grant Jackson has now pitched 12 innings, where they call only six and two thirds. Baltimore sitting 234 with a 270 team ERA. They're wasting some great pitching. Speaking of great pitching, Jim Palmer is 5-0, but he pitched the last game before this series started, so he was going to be the Game 3 pitcher. Now he's not. He'll just have to get an extra day off before he'll start the next series. Baltimore's offense has been dismal. I hate to rub it in on Boog Powell, but it has been a forgettable performance with his 1970 MVP card the last year using this card, by the way. Yeah, that's 12 for 74 for Boog Powell. That's 162 for Baltimore's cleanup hitter. It's a miracle they're 11 and 8. We'll look at the year-to-date numbers here and then take a look at the standings again. 290 games in, the league is hitting 262 with a 389 ERA. And the up to the time standings now, you see that in the National League, uh, the Pirates are now leapfrog the Cardinals. And you have a one and a half game sandwich between them and and the Reds. Meanwhile, in the American League East, it is two full games back for the Orioles, Yankees four and a half back. So the Red Sox are in great shape now. They'll be the number one at the end of this round, I believe, yeah, with the highest winning percentage, edging out the Tigers, who knocked the Red Sox out of the playoffs last year, which is another story. Great series. Hope you're enjoying the 1970-73 Carryover League We'll see you next time.